Hello, welcome to our lesson 2.1 on solving inequalities. So last chapter we focused entirely on uh, solving equations, solving equations in word problems, using those to solve word problems, and then we solved some inequality equations. That's mainly the whole focus of that chapter was solving equations. This chapter we're going to step into a focus on inequalities instead of equations, inequalities. So hopefully you know what an inequality is. An inequality is just whenever we're comparing values and I may have something like uh, x is less than um, 5. Instead of an equal sign we'll be dealing with inequalities. Or I could have a whole longer expression, something like 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 19. So that looks kind of like what we're dealing with with equations. The only difference is I have uh, an inequality instead of <clears throat> symbol instead of an equal sign. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at in this whole chapter. But today we're going to start with trying to solve inequalities, and then we have a special way we want to write the answers. So let me kind of start there. Okay, so. What we're going to do is, in every example we work today, we're going to start with an inequality. And if it needs solving, we're going to work on solving it. And we'll talk about how to do that. Then what we're going to do is, our, we want all the final answers in interval notation. Okay, And that's just a special way of writing them, which I'll teach you about here throughout this lesson. We'll actually focus on this at the beginning so that we can work the examples at the end. And the in-between step is, we take our time to graph them. Now, these only have one variable in them. There's not going to be two variables like an x and a y. There's only going to be an x, which means they're only one-dimensional graph. So we'll only be graphing them, say, like on a number line, an x axis number line. So these these are really easy, um, really easy graphs. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that's what we'll be doing. So let's talk about this. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you the reason that we're graphing is because it gives you a visual, easy representation to be able to write the interval notation correctly, because a lot of people struggle with writing the interval notation. And so th this is mainly to help you, but it's also an important skill to have, to have some visual tools built up for later in this chapter. We'll hit some where we'll need to be able to graph to process higher, uh, higher difficulty inequalities. Okay, so let's just start with an inequality that's already solved. Um, actually, let's 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 talk about some things here. When we go to graph an inequality, we're going to graph it on a number line because it's only going to have one variable. It'll be something like let's just use this for example: x is less than five. Okay, and so this is a number line. I can put all the numbers I want on there. I could put zero in the middle, but I'm I'm comparing x to five, so we're going to put five in the middle and you could take the time to put all the numbers but at this level we're all mature enough to know where all the numbers go so we're just going to be lazy and allow you to be lazy and put the a number we're talking about we don't have to have this centered on zero this number line can be slid anywhere we want so we'll we'll put our number that we're comparing to x in the middle and then we need to decide which side of this represents our inequality so our inequality is x is less than 5. So on a number line, as you move to the right side, these numbers are getting bigger. So all these numbers are greater than 5. On the left side, we're counting down. Maybe for the first one, I will put a few numbers just to give us more of a, let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4, 3. And so if we want to represent x with our graph, we want to say, hey, all these numbers are less than 5. So all the numbers less than 5, oh, we're going to shade to the left of 5, because all these numbers to the left are smaller than or less than 5. Then what we'll need is we'll need some sort of symbol to mark 5, because there's two differences in inequalities. I have x is less than 5, but I could also have x is less than or equal to 5. When you have the line underneath an inequality, it means or equal to. That means that it's allowed to be equal to it. And so I need some sort of symbols to tell these things apart. Traditional textbooks use an open or shaded dot on your graph to tell you this, but our textbook is a little bit different. Um, our, our, this, actually, all the classes at this university for this Math 105 teach this using the same symbols that we'll end up borrowing or using 
in interval notation. So for a less than, if you use these, that's okay. But let's get rid of them and show you what everybody else or all the other teachers use at this place. A plain less than, or this would work for a greater than as well, but a plain less than, we're going to use a parenthesis. So this is a plain less than, so we would put a parenthesis right on the 5. And what that means is we can get really, really, really close to 5, but we're not allowed to equal it. It's not an or equal to. So this is like representing 4.99999 and, you know, forever until you're annoyed hearing me saying nines. As close as you can to 5 without equaling it. If we are going to use an equal to, less than or equal to, we would use a square bracket. A square bracket on the graph, if I were to put a square bracket here, which I'll do an example in a little bit that has an or equal to, means that we are allowed to equal it. So that would be including 5. 5 is the highest number in all less if I used a square bracket. Now, um, if I use a, a greater than, it's a parenthesis as well. Let's change colors just so stuff doesn't all run together. So if I use a greater than, we would use a parenthesis. If I use a greater than or equal to, I would use a square bracket. And then these are the symbols we're going to borrow to write our interval notation. We'll talk about that right now, I guess. Um, all right. <clears throat> so parentheses and square back brackets. Sound good? Now notice the way I direct the parentheses. Wherever I shaded is where I cup it to. If I shaded on this side, I cup it that way. Now, same thing with a square bracket. The kind of the open face goes towards the shading. Okay, so I think we got that. Um, so what we'll do is you'll have an inequality. Check. They gave it to us. We'll graph it. Check. And then we need to write our interval notation. But what in the world is interval notation? It's a really simple type of way of writing intervals. Hence what's called interval notation. Um, let me scroll down here a little bit so we have some more room to work. So what interval notation is, is basically you're going to have... Uh, two spots to write numbers, a starting number and the ending number with a comma in between them, and then you're going to have symbols around them. So the first blank is where you are starting at, or, you know, from this number, and the second number, second blank, is, is where you're going to, up to this number. So from this number to this number, and then you put symbols around it. Um, so... I really want to do this example, but I kind of want to have an even easier one to start with. So if I were to give you a graph, say, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Just slide it over there. And let me give you a, a new graph. Um, so if I wanted to write this graph in interval notation, let's say I have between 3 and 7. And let's, oh, let's even have different symbols. So it's x has got to be greater than 3, but less than or equal to 7. Okay. And so what we do to do our interval notation is we read left to right, just like we read English. And so I'm going to go and put my finger on my, on my number line and go left and start reading towards the right. And as soon as I see where my shading starts, that's the first number. So it's going from 3, comma. And then you keep tracing it, and where does it end? It ends at 7. 3 to 7. So the interval is from 3 to 7, and you would agree I've shaded from 3 to 7. Order is important. Smaller number always on the left, because we're always reading left to right. Now, I need some sort of symbols so you know I don't just have two numbers listed with a comma. Well, guess what? Whatever symbol is on the graph on that number, it also goes on the number on our that same side of our interval notation. So the 3 is a plain inequality, no or equal to, so it gets a parenthesis, so the 3 gets a parenthesis. In this graph, the 7 is an or equal to, or square bracket, so our interval notation gets a square bracket. So there, so it's pretty simple if you know your left and right to go, okay, start at the left, trace it, where do you see shading start, where do you see shading stop? Still the symbols. That's why they use these symbols on their graphs, because you can just still the symbols, and there's your interval notation. And so interval notation is just from start here, end here, from this number to this number. So let's see if we can do this one now. We'll need to discuss something else. So go all the way to the left, and oh my, my shading has already started. What does it mean to have this arrow pointing to the left? That means it's going back forever. So do I have a number I can put then to represent back forever? And the answer is, yeah. 
my interval notation here is it's it's one of these infinities. Well, that's the negative direction. To the left is the negative direction. To the right is the positive direction. So it's going back to negative infinity, comma. If I keep tracing, it's shading all the way up. So when you go all the way to the arrow, it's one of either negative infinity, or if we shaded this way, that would be positive infinity. So we're going from negative infinity, if I trace it left to right, all the way up to 5. So from negative infinity to 5. And I see the symbol on the 5 as a parenthesis. But oh no, there's no symbol here, so what do I put on the negative infinity? Well, that's something else to discuss, is that every time you use any infinity, negative or positive infinity, it's always going to be a parenthesis. Okay, and the reason for that is because infinity is technically not a number. Infinity is an idea of going forever. Can I equal something that's not a number? No. And so since I can never equal infinity, we always use parentheses. Because what do parentheses mean? As close as you can without equaling it. Parentheses are for not equaling it. And we never can equal an infinity, negative or positive. So infinity always gets a parenthesis. Okay. So there, we've done one right here. This example on the left. We had an inequality. We graphed it. And we use interval notation. Let's do two, one or two more simple examples of that. Just taking an inequality, graphing it, and writing interval notation before we move on. Let's go with one like this. Like x is less than or equal to negative 3. And so these are really easy to graph. Number line, what number are we comparing x to? Negative 3. That's the only number we need. Okay. I feel good about that. Now, this is a less than or equal to symbol. So less than negative 3 would be to the left. So we'll shade to the left. And it's an or equal to, so parenthesis or square bracket? Well, an or equal to means we're allowed to equal it, so square bracket. Okay, so we have the inequality, we have the graph. Now we need interval notation. And so we're going to go from what number to what number? So start tracing. Where does the shading start? Oh, all the way. So it starts at negative infinity. I know this symbol for any infinity is a parenthesis, comma. So for from negative infinity up to negative 3. Up to negative 3. And we are allowed to equal it. We have a square bracket on the 3. So let me put it on my negative 3 here. So there. That was pretty simple. Let's do a greater than one. We haven't done a greater than one. How about um, x is greater than 1? Okay, so let's draw a number line, see if we can graph this thing. So what are we comparing x to? We're comparing it to 1. All right, which way am I going to need to shade? x is greater than 1, so all these numbers are smaller than 1 on the left. All these numbers on the right are greater than 1, so we need to shade to the right. Because x is greater than, we're trying to represent x with our shading. All right, it's a plain inequality, not an or equal to so that means I'm not allowed to equal 1, so I need a parenthesis on 1. Great, so we've graphed it. Now let's see if we can write the interval notation. So put your finger on your graph and trace it. When does my shading start? Oh, it starts at 1, comma. And when does it end? Oh, it goes forever, so 1 to infinity. Uh, what symbol is on the 1? A parenthesis. And what symbol always goes on infinities? A parenthesis. So there we go. So these interval notations we will use later in the course for some other things as well. But they're just a way mathematically to represent a whole a whole interval, for lack of a better word. I would say range, but that's a sketchy word to use. A whole interval of numbers from this number to this number. Okay. So now let's build completely to what we're trying to do today. We're trying to solve inequalities and then get the final answer and interval notation. So let me give an example. 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 19. So here's my question for you. Is there a difference of solving this, whether there is an equal sign here or an inequality symbol? If, there, if it's the same, then we're golden because we already know how to do it. And I'll go ahead and tell you, it's almost, it's 99 point, it's 99% it's, it's the same as solving with an equal sign. For most of the time, you can just jump in and solve it the same. There's only one slight difference, and I'll actually tell you that difference when we hit it, okay? I'll talk to you about it when we get there. 
All right. And so looking at this one, this one's not going to have the issue. Whatever the issue is, you don't know what it is yet. But I can go ahead and straight up solve this. 2x plus 7 doesn't, and we can do our three S's. Does it need simplifying? Uh, nothing to distribute, no like terms. Nothing to distribute, no like terms. Check. Do we need to get the x's on the same side? X's on the left, no x's on the right. So they're already on the, all the x's are on the same side. Check. So now I can finally solve. So let's get x by itself. Is x by itself? No, it has a 2 and a 7 with it. Which do I get rid of first? Uh, the 7. So how do I get rid of a positive 7? Minus 7. Bring down our 2x. We haven't touched it yet. 7 minus 7. He gone. Less than or equal to 19 minus 7. Oh, that is just 12. Okay. Is x by itself yet? Yeah, no, it's got a 2 with it. It's 2. Two's being multiplied, so I would need to divide two on both sides. So this is good practice of our solving that we just did last chapter, which is one of the most important algebraic skills. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So there, we have solved it and gotten x by itself. We're now going to want to do what we did just last page and graph it and interval notate it so we can give the final answer in interval notation. So I'm comparing x to 6. Let's see if we can figure out which way we'd like to shade. All right, this is x is less than or equal to 6. So less than would be to the left or equal to. You guys have this now. We've practiced this at the beginning of the lesson. We should be really quick on graphing. And let's see, you may not even have to take the time to trace it with your finger. But if you get a little confused, start at the left, go to the right. Where do we shade? We shade from forever up to 6. So from negative infinity up to 6. Uh, 6 has a square bracket. And what symbol always goes on the infinities? A parenthesis. So there is our final answer in interval notation. Negative six up to, I mean, sorry, negative infinity up to six. Good job. That wasn't really hard, was it? All right, let's see what this one issue is. So we didn't run into it, but I'm gonna show you this, this one issue on the next example, okay? We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna solve it, graph it, interval notate it. And so let me see, how about negative 3x plus 7 is greater than 37. And before we jump in, let me put a little line here. We'll come back and solve that. Let's discover this one issue. And so the idea is, if I have something that's true, let's just start with a true inequality. Uh, I hope everybody would agree that 5 is less than 10. Is that true? Yes, that's true. So the idea of algebra is I can do anything to the left side as long as I do it to the right side, and it should remain true. So for instance, this is just us exploring. This is not something I'll have you ever do, but I could do something like, you know what? Let's multiply each side by 4. As long as I do the same thing on the left and the right, it should remain a true statement. If it were an equal sign, I'd have an equal thing, and it would remain equal. Since it's an inequality, 5 is less than 10, and it should stay less than 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 10 is 40. Is it still true? Does 20, is 20 less than 40? Yes, okay. I can do division. I can divide both sides by 2. Divided by 2, divided by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Is that less than 40 divided by 2 is 20? Yeah, it's still true. I can add to each side. Let's see, uh, plus 1, plus 1, if I add the same thing to each side. 10 plus 1 is 11. 20 plus 1 is 21. Yeah, it's still true. I can subtract from each side. Um, minus 6, minus 6. Um, let's see, what is that? 11 minus 6 is 5. 21 minus 6 is 15. Okay, so it's still true. There's only one thing that messes up the truthfulness, and that's the rule that will be different when we solve these. It's if I multiply, oops, forgot the head, or divide, by a negative. And the reason for that is because that changes the signs and flips everything kind of the other way. So check this out. If I were to multiply both sides, or I could divide, multiply or divide by a negative. So if I were to say times negative 2, times negative 2, well, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. I'm going to bring down this inequality, and we'll talk about why it's wrong. 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. If I were to put these numbers on a number line, you'd have like 0. If I count by 10s, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. 
we can see that negative 30 is further to the left. This is the less than. So 10 is greater than negative 30. When I multiplied by a negative, this is no longer true. That's because this takes us from the positive side, or it takes us from one side of the, of the graph. If you were to graph like those two points, and it flips them over to the negative side. And so what should happen is we'll have to remember if, if we multiply or divide by negative, we're going to have to flip the inequality symbol. And that is the only difference, the only difference in solving inequalities. If you multiply or divide by negative during your steps, you must flip your inequality symbol. Okay. So let's look at this example now. We're ready to rock and roll. I think we've learned everything we need for the for this lesson. We're going to do like just three more examples and we'll call it a day. So I go to solve this. Uh, there's nothing that needs simplifying. No x is on both sides. They're all on the same side. So I jump into solving. Is x by itself? No, it has negative 3 and a plus 7. So how do I get rid of a positive 7? I subtract 7. Nothing sketchy so far. This is exactly like the last problem. So I haven't touched the negative 3, 7 minus 7, gone. Greater than 37 minus 7 is 30. Looking good, looking good. Now you say it's x by itself. No, it has the negative 3 multiplied by it. So I'm going to need to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Oh my, I just did something. I just divided by a negative. If I multiply or divide by a negative in any of my steps, it's at that step that I'm going to want to flip this inequality. So what I do is, as soon as I write down negative 3, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm changing the sign because I'm dividing or multiplying by a negative. I go ahead and circle this, draw a little arrow down, and make sure I flip it. I ignore the rest of the problem for a second to be sure that I get this flipped. So it is a greater than, it will become a less than. Okay, then I go back to the problem. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is gone. I'm left with just an x. 30 divided by negative 3 is negative 10. So make sure that you focus on flipping this inequality. That is the only difference in solving equal signs or inequalities. All right, now we just go about our business graphing it, which you guys are rock stars at by now. X is less than negative 10. Well, that's not too bad. Less than is this way. Uh, it's a plain less than, so it's a parenthesis. In interval notation, if you trace this, we start at forever, so in negative infinity, up to negative 10. And the 10 has a parenthesis on it. Infinities always have inf uh, parentheses. So there is our final answer in interval notation. All right. Like I said, one or two more examples and we'll be done. Let's try another one. If I'm going kind of fast, pause and think about some of these steps I'm doing and ponder this, this one rule. The only difference is the thing people forget the most. So negative 2 divided by 5 times x is less than negative 6. Ugh, now we have fractions in the way. It's okay. It's just like when we did the solving equations. You don't like this fraction? Kill it off. So this fraction being on the bottom is the same thing as a divided by 5. So if I'd like to multiply both sides by 5, that will kill off that fraction. So what happens is the 5 being multiplied, the 5 on the bottom, they cancel, and I'm left with just negative 2x is less than, let's see, negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Nice, that's not too bad. Now I need to get x by itself. I need to divide by negative 2. Oh, I'm dividing by negative. So we need to remember to flip this inequality. It was a less than, it's going to become a greater than. Okay, so let's finish. Let's see, the divide both sides by negative 2. Those cancel, leaving us with x. And negative 30 divided by 2. We'll see, a negative divided by negative makes a pretty baby a positive. And a 30 divided by 2 is 15. So now let's get a number line, compare x to 15. x is greater than 15, so greater than is to the right. Uh, plain inequality, so a parenthesis. And so I think we're ready for our interval notation. So tracing from left to right, the shading starts at 15 and ends at the arrow. So that's from 15 to forever, to positive infinity.
Infinity always gets a parenthesis, and our 15 has a parenthesis. So there's our final answer. Hopefully you're feeling good on this. We're kind of moseying faster and faster because we got this. This isn't too hard. Let's do one last example. I'm going to show you as hard as they can possibly make it. They can add stuff that we did back with equations, like when we really have to simplify and get the x's on the same side. So we can up the level of difficulty on this, but it's not any harder. Just take your time and concentrate. So let's go with 10 minus 2, parentheses, x plus 4, close parentheses, is greater than or equal to 6 minus, parentheses, x minus 4. And I see something right away I'd like to add in. Notice I have a parenthesis here with nothing to distribute. So I'm going to put a 1 in there because that's what we always would like to do to have something to distribute. So let's see. If I think of my three S's, I definitely have stuff to simplify this time. I have stuff to distribute. They don't have like terms. So let's work on the left side. Because remember, this simplifies one side at a time. So let's see. Bring down the 10. I got to simplify. Remember, it's always two steps. Distribute and combine. So let's see. Negative 2 times x, just to remind you of stuff we've covered. Any sign belongs to the number right after it. Or any number takes the sign with it in front of it. So this is a negative 2. So negative 2 times x is a minus 2x, or a negative 2x. Negative 2 times a positive 4, well, that makes a negative 2 times 4 is 8. Okay. All right. Are there any like terms to combine? Yeah, there's 10 and a negative 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. So I have 2 minus 2x is greater than or equal to. All right. So we've simplified the left side. Let's go back and simplify the right. I'm not going to touch the 6 at first, but this negative 1 has got to distribute. Negative 1 times a positive x makes a negative x. Negative 1 times a negative 4 makes a positive 4. I do have like terms here. Let's see. I got 6 plus 4. So 6 plus 4 is 10. So I have 10 minus x. Nice. Now I can move. So that's, that's this first simplify each side done. I need to get the x's on the same side. I have them on opposite sides, so I can move any of these. I might move, like, a, I usually like to move the smallest, and negative 2 is further to the left on the number line than negative 1 is smaller. And I'll show you why that's a good step. So how do I get rid of negative 2x? I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And when I add 2x, negative 2x and 2x goes away. I'm left with just a 2. It's greater than or equal to 10. Let's see, negative x plus 2x, so that's like negative 1 plus 2, that's going to be positive 1. So I'm left with a positive 1x. I don't need to show the 1, a positive x. And we're almost done solving. So I need to get rid of this positive 10, so I'll subtract 10 from both sides to get x by itself. 2 minus 10 is negative 8, greater than or equal to x. So I got x by itself, but... <clears throat> this is the first inequality where we have the x on the other side. Some people really struggle with graphing these and soaking in the, the idea of what this even means. Well, let's go ahead and do our, our number line. We know we're comparing x to negative 8, but which way am I going to shade? If it feels backwards to you and you'd like to flip it <clears throat> so that the x is on the left, pay attention to the inequality symbol. It's a greater than or equal to, and it's pointing to the x. So if I wanted to flip it and put the x on this side and the negative 8 on this side, the inequality symbol has got to still mean the same thing. So since it's pointing to the x, it's got to point to the x whenever I flip it as well. Okay? So whichever way you write it, the inequality symbol... Remember back in third grade when they taught you these, and they're like, it's an alligator mouth. It's always eating the larger number. Well, if we're telling you negative 8 is larger than x... It still needs to be eating the larger number, and if I want to flip this just to have x on the other side, I still need negative 8's the bigger number than x. So if I flip it this way, this is how it looks. So x is less than or equal to negative 8. And I know what to do from here. Less than or equal to is this way, uh, or equal to is a square bracket. Uh, interval notation from negative infinity up to negative 8. I have a square bracket on negative 8, always a parenthesis on infinity, and I'm done. If you don't like trying to flip this, you can just always move your x's over to this side. What would have happened here is you would have a, a negative 1 and had to divide by negative 1 and would have ended up flipping this inequality anyways. Okay. Awesome.
So that's all I have for you today. Um, we'll, we'll keep growing our inequality solving, and we'll do some, some bigger and badder inequalities. Or not necessarily, but some more interesting ones next lesson and some word problems maybe. So see you next time.